Hello everybody and welcome back to another how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at belts and augers as they are in the base game of Farming Simulator 22. Now if we take a look at them in the shop, we're going to go to tools and then belt systems. Now there are several different belts and augers listed here and they all have rather unique capabilities. We have a Lizard S710 for $5,000. This belt specializes in the ability to pick up product off the ground. Think of it as basically a giant shovel that can automatically pick up product. We have the Grimmy TC816. This sticker belt has the great capability of transporting product horizontally above the ground from point A to point B, and it can be positioned in such a way that it can navigate turns. We have the RH2460. This dual purpose belt has the ability to allow you to dump product into it from a trailer, or you have the ability to make pallets of sugar beets or potatoes. Now it was pointed out during my sugar beet and potato how-to video that I neglected to mention this particular belt. And I really did feel bad about that. I should have remembered, but there's just so many aspects of Farm Sim 22. It's really ridiculous how deep the game is and how many different ways there are to do certain things. Then we have the SL8022 Quantum. This particular belt has the capability of raising up and extending, as well as offering a sweep function. The Meridian TL12-39 belt. This sole purpose is to move product from one point to another, specifically with the Meridian bins, but you can also use this in other ways. I believe we demonstrated in our biogas plant video, this belt has, or this auger, I should say, has the capability of even moving manure from, let's say, a trailer to the digester of a biogas plant. Then we have the Convey All 1690. This particular belt has the capability of filling the meridian bins from a trailer. And we're going to demonstrate all of these belts right now. So I have already done a video on how to use augers and the meridian bins. We're not going to go into great detail on how to maneuver and set up these augers but this is the general orientation that you will often see augers and the meridian bins used we have the convey all down here positioned to allow us to dump into the belt and then it will then transfer the product to the top of the meridian bin and then we have the meridian auger call this an auger because well there is a screw auger in there. This particular auger will take product out of the Meridian bin and, well, put it into a trailer. So let's just go ahead real quick and see how that process works. So I have 59,400 liters of oats in this particular trailer. And I chose this particular trailer for a reason and that is because, well, I did not necessarily realize that this trailer, the fact that it's called three in one, means it has three different functions. But honestly, I don't really use semi trailers that often in my own personal play. But as you can see from the F1 menu, we have the choice of tip side back, tip side green door, and tip side sliding floor. I wish I had realized that when I had done the potato and sugar beet videos and I was having difficulty tipping into the train silo. So we're going to back up and then we are going to hit I to unload into the belt. And we can now see that we are filling the bin. The belt is moving our oats from trailer to the meridian bin. And once we went to pull product back out, 
We're going to pull underneath the Meridian Auger. We're going to hit R to start filling. We're going to be able to select our oats. And then you can see the auger is getting oats out of the bin. And then we have the screw of the auger. Rotating right there and depositing the product up into our trailer. Now, some have pointed out that these augers do not have PTOs on them. They should be attached to tractors, but each of these has an electric motor, and that is what's providing the power for the auger to rotate both on the meridian bin and on the convey all belt. Now I have this particular building set up here for a reason, because this building is designed for you to tip or store product into. Ideally, you would store either beets or potatoes into this particular building. We're gonna be able to find this building under sheds, and it is the bunk hall. And this particular building will rotate in one of four different directions. And that is because it does have the ability to have product tipped into it. So for this section of the video, I wanted to basically demonstrate how we would possibly fill this particular building, not by simply just backing up our trailer and dumping into it, but using a belt system to fill the building. All of the belts have the capability of being driven. So you walk up to the belt, you hit E to enter the belt. And from here, we can drive it around. I always end up driving it in the reverse direction. Now this particular belt, we can raise with the left mouse button up and down, right mouse button left and right to extend and retract it. This belt can really, really extend a fairly long reach. We also have the ability of unfolding the belt. And when we do that, you'll see that the wheels will rotate. And then we can drive the belt left or right, just like that. I'm just going to back this belt up to right about there. That seems to be fairly good. And we'll drop that off. Now, a real simple belt setup would be then to take our lizard belt. We'll enter it. We can fold it, which will allow us to raise the hitch of X. And then we can drive this belt over and put it right in front of this belt. We can raise and lower the hitch, like so. And we can, in fact, then if we move back to the big belt, we can actually attach the lizard belt to our belts. So now when we move, these belts move in unison. Now I'm just going to detach it just because I want to. And now what we could do is we could bring our truck over here. We could tip to the ground product. This belt would pick it up off the ground, deposit it into this belt, which would then place it into our building right here. But no, we're not gonna do that because we have yet another belt that we need to demonstrate. So we move this belt out of the way. And let's enter the next belt, which is Grimmy TC-816. This belt has lots of controls and trust me, I get them mixed up 
all the time. So we have the ability to drive the belt forward and back, left and right. Left mouse button, left and right, will allows us to swing the belt. We can swing the belt a full 180 degrees, if we should so wish. Left mouse button up and down allows us to raise and lower the angle of the belt. Right mouse button, left and right, lets us basically extend this belt to almost double its overall length. And right mouse button up and down allows us to raise and lower that end of the belt right there. So we could really have ourselves a nice long belt if we had it in a straight position like this. I'm going to back it up here. We're going to need to raise this belt up. And again, they have a hitch. As you can see, the hitch right there. So if we wanted to, we could connect all of these belts together. Now, what I'm going to do here is rotate this belt 90 degrees just to demonstrate that we're gonna hop out of that belt and we're gonna jump into our lizard belt just for funsies and we're gonna position it right here So now that we have our belts lined up, what I want to do is tip some sugar beets onto the ground. We're going to do a control I to force unload some sugar beets. I think that is enough. And now the next thing we need to do is we need to change a setting in our game so that these belts will continue to run without us needing to be in them. So if we go to escape and then down here under game settings, we're gonna look for automatic engine start and we're gonna turn that off. So what that means is with automatic engine start off, when we get into a vehicle, the engine doesn't start until we start it by hitting enter. It also means when we get out of a vehicle, the engine does not turn off until we turn it off again by being in the vehicle and hitting enter. So what I want to do now is jump into our lizard belt and we will start the engine. We will turn the belt on and now it is moving product up to the big belt. But it is now stopped. Why is it stopped? Well, there's nothing to unload the belt onto. If I had a trailer under the belt, it would unload into the trailer. Just like if I back up a trailer into this building, it's not going to prompt me to unload. If I want to unload in the building, just like I wanted to unload on the ground, I had to tell it to unload here. I had to force it to unload. So control I. Oh, I forgot. I gotta turn my engine on. Enter, control I. And now, everything should work as expected. Let me go back here and jump into this belt. I want to reposition this just to be careful. And now you can see everything is working exactly as expected. But wait, there's more. 
as you may have seen from the thumbnail, this particular belt has a feature. And that is that we can unfold the belt, which rotates its tires. Now we can hit change angle. You notice it says 50 degrees. Let's change that. We can change it from five degrees to 50. I'm going to set it to 25 degrees. And I am going to hire a worker. And now the belt is going to rotate 25 degrees to the left, 25 degrees to the right. And it's just going to continually rotate left and right until I get into it and tell it to stop. So what this is going to allow us to do is to place a nice even heap in this building. And as we fill this building up, we can shorten the belt so that it can continue to fill the building this way until we have filled it completely. And of course, if we wanted to, we could then dump more sugar beets onto the ground. That will pick them up and we would just continue this process for as long as we wanted to. Now I wanted to demonstrate the use of the RH2460 belt. And for this, we are going to dump some more sugar beets into our building. Now I have moved the lizard belt and I'm going to position the TC816 belt basically underneath of the other belt like that. You see this belt is continuing to swing back and forth, back and forth. We have deposited a nice even pile of sugar beets to this point. So I'm going to back this trailer up. And we will get an unload icon that we can just tip directly into the Grimmy, we'll just call it the hopper belt. There we go. Now we can hit I. If we didn't go and knock it out of position, which is fine because we do have the ability to move this belt like so. And once we get things lined up perfectly, you see uh, this belt is moving product up and over along this belt to this belt, which is then swinging back and forth depositing product on our heat. The big hopper belt will hold 13,000 liters of product before it is full. So we can unload. And now basically we are going to be slowly unloading our trailer at the same rate at which the belt is moving product. You see our beats are slowly going down in the trailer. The belt is full and it is moving product. 
So that is one way that you can basically store product into this bulk haul with the use of these belts. Now I want to show you another use for the RH2460. So the final trick up my sleeve for this particular video is that if we enter into the RH2460, you see we have 13,000 liters worth of beats. We have a really cool feature. It says enable pallet creation B. This belt will now create 1,000 liter pallets of sugar beets or potatoes. And at that point, we can use a forklift. to maneuver our pallet out of the way. And once we move it out of the way, another one spawns in its place and will fill to 1,000 liter capacity. And from here we can store our crates of sugar beets. We can put them on a flatbed trailer and sell them. If we are doing potatoes, we could, as it was pointed out in the comment, we could palletize the number of potatoes that we needed for next year's harvest and store those in a building and then make use of them later when it comes to planting season. So guys, that is it for our how-to video related to belts and augers. Hopefully I showed you all some new little tricks that maybe you did not realize. It's my opinion that belts are likely least, least used of some of the most handy features or functions in Farming Simulator 22. Let me know, do you use belts with any frequency? Did you realize that you could cause one of the belts to just swing back and forth on its own to provide a nice, even keep? How about the feature for this one to make pallets of sugar beets and potatoes? And until next time, happy farming.